everyone, and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Lyndall Stout. It is almost rodeo time here at OSU. We'll have more on the big event these students are practicing for a little later in the show. But first, we want to talk about winter nutrition for livestock. Here's SUNUP's Austin Moore. Fall has just begun, but it's time to start thinking about winter supplementation for cattle. Joining us now is Dave Lawman, our beef cattle specialist. Dave, let's talk about when we supplement this winter. What are we really looking to get to those cattle? Well, for range cows out on uh, native grass in particular, the primary thing we generally consider is protein supplementation because the native grass forage or warm season forage uh, that's been stockpiled for grazing is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 2 to 5% crude protein and a cow's requirement, depending on the stage of production, is somewhere between 8 and 12. So we need more protein. Absolutely. And of course, not normally we use cubes, but there are some other options out there on the market. Yeah. C cubes are very convenient. You know, uh, they're handy for range cattle because cows can pick, a, say, a three-quarter inch cube up off the ground without wasting very much feed, if any. Um, and they flow easy and so on. They're easy to handle. Those are going to be based primarily on a cottonseed meal, sometimes a little bit of soybean meal and other protein sources, but a lot of them rely heavily in this part of the world on cottonseed meals, their primary protein source. You asked about other sources, right. so you know there's a lot of really good plant protein sources on the market. Uh, Distillers Dried Grains is one that that we've featured on SUNUP with the research we've done here at OSU in years past, and it continues to be a very popular product. It doesn't cube very well. So, uh, so you know, it, it, it brings other challenges to the table in terms of handling a meal form or textured form feed, if you will, instead of a cube, but it's a very good source. But there are other, there are other uh, commodities as well that producers use, uh, corn gluten feed, is another good example. Sunflower meal, canola meal are all examples of commodities that uh, have been used recently. Give us a, an example, if you would, of, of one of those alternatives versus cubes, say, in, in terms of the economics of it. Well, right now, there's a, at this moment, no telling how long it will last, but there's a dramatic difference in commodity protein, plant protein source commodity prices, um, with cottonseed meal and soybeans meal being extremely expensive right at the moment and distillers grains is one example of a commodity that's very inexpensive right now. We can get distillers grains bulk uh, delivered into the central part of the state now for somewhere around $170, $180 a ton. You might be able to do a little bit better than that. But let's say an average price per pound of protein, if you're able to handle a bulk commodity like that, uh, is going to be cost per pound of protein around 28 cents. So pretty competitive, very inexpensive. Um, you know, a cottonseed mill based product is probably right now, based on the current market price, is going to be somewhere more in the 55 to almost 70 cents per pound of protein dramatic difference in price right at the moment. So then if you can handle the amount, if you can handle the different way of, of getting it to your cattle, certainly something you're going to think about that price difference. I would c encourage folks to consider that uh, this year and then and then just you know only, they're the only ones that can decide right. how much the extra hassle factor you if you will or if they have the equipment, the storage facilities and so on to deal with it but they have to decide what that's worth to them. So I guess the key thing is, is regardless of, of what options you're doing, you need to sit down with pen and paper and really take a look at it before you make a purchase. That's right, and, and this year, and particularly right now, uh, is the time to do some homework. I, if, if we don't leave with any other message, that's one I think they ought to think about. Call your, your feed company, your feed dealer, you know, call your commodity broker, read the fact sheet, uh, relative to the challenges you might consider uh, for one feed source compared to the other and go from there. You might save your, you know, an opportunity at least to make a, a serious evaluation, save yourself some money possibly. All right. If you'd like to read more about this topic, you can find a fact sheet on our website, sunup.okstate.edu.